Hey guys, this is here bringing you another video and welcome to a challenge spectate. I haven't actually been doing many of these since pre-season. Uh, I've obviously been playing the game a lot myself, but I still see the value of them. And what I'm trying to say and ask today is Riven is a bit of a weird pick. So if you're watching this in North America, a lot of you potentially have the mentality that Riven is a god of solo queue. And in the US, she's always been considered good, but I don't know if we've ever had given her the like top tier god status of solo queue. And that is just one of the regional differences that exists, is North America has always loved Riven and seen Riven as this top tier pick. And part of that has to do, and it must be said, with two, two things, is content creators. So like in North America had a few more Riven one trick content creators. Obviously there was a few famous ones and unfortunately like Box Box I think has moved on from League. And there's a few others. So if you just have a few well-known challenger one trick content creators on one server it does raise the profile of that champion on that server and kind of the knowledge of that champion on the server as well because you're more likely to go against it if you're in challenger if there's a bunch of ribbon mains the weird thing is you as i don't know i don't think ever really had that like i for one cannot think and i know i'm not the expert in the area uh, of lol content creators but i cannot think of one eu west content creator that mains Riven. There was several that used to main Riven on North America. So what we're trying to answer today is, is Riven a solo queue god? And we're watching a challenger player against Fiora. Now, Fiora right now is probably considered the strongest top laner in the game. Ravenous Hydra, before it gets nerfed, is mental. Um, so hopefully the nerfs for that will be good because the top champions now, like the top, top champions are all Ravenous Hydra users. You know, it's Fiora Riven, arguably, but I wouldn't put her in the same group as the other champions. But, you know, Camille, Aatrox, there's a few others. They all very much use uh, Ravenous Hydra. It's just been a little bit too overtuned. The healing is also kind of ridiculous too. So potentially this will be kind of fixed and maybe Fiora and maybe even Riven will be hurt a bit in the patch. But for now... Uh, and, you know, this has been a long patch. It's been a three-week patch, not a two-week patch. Um, stuff like Fiora and Riven have been kind of taking over. Now, what you've noticed already is a big thing of why leashing is not the most fun thing in the world for top laners specifically. The only reason that Riven is behind in top lane pretty much is because she had to leash and she was that fraction of a second late to lane. And that just gives Fiora lane advantage. And at this level, they know mistakes can matter and little xp differences can matter so you've got to be really careful even something to like a fiora where she's running tp riven's running um ignite and that is part of what i would say also the reason why riven's even being safer because if she takes a bad trade she probably doesn't have the strength to all in a riven yet um even with ignite but if she takes a bad trade riven uh, so fiora if she takes a bad trade can go back tp no problem if Riven takes a bad trade, then she's going to get even further behind because she can't just TP back to lane. So she is going through a bit of a nice engage there. Obviously, the, the best Rivens in the world, you'll always see very fluid gameplay in between each Q combo. They try to get an auto attack because you're maximizing the passive. Um, and it, it is, I would say, a nice thing to watch is a good Riven. Um, you know, as per combo champions go, because, you know, Riven is a somewhat combo champion. She's not like the hardest of the hard, but she's she's up there. A, a big thing with Riven, undoubtedly, is animation cancelling is incredibly important on this champion because those are the fraction of time moments that speed up your DPS and actually give you that mo like extra burst in the, the specific time window you need. Um, <clears throat> and obviously things, you know... The old Hydra and that, you could use the active to get an auto reset. That was part of the combo. I don't think, obviously, it does that anymore. Um, but maintaining your combo correctly with auto attacks is top tier Riven gameplay. So Riven was thinking about, you know, I found Hecarim there. He does obviously have Flash. He used Ghost to the level uh, with the first blood or whatever happened in bot lane. So I think Riven had that moment of like, do I go for this? Double sums, maybe you could kill him. But decides against it. So the one thing I will say about this Fiora, she's quite, and it's not bad, you know, she's a challenger player, I'd imagine as well. She's quite early with her W. Why? So this matchup is a pretty big skill matchup. 
if the Fiora lands the stun, then Riven is killable. And if Riven doesn't get stunned, Fiora is killable. And Riven can obviously use her W. And here's the all-in, by the way. She Oh, she does get stunned, but the Ignite makes the Fiora just walk away. But that's not terrible by Fiora. You've got Riven in, Riven's Ignite out and you haven't died. So overall, that's actually not a bad situation for the Fiora. She can teleport back to lane. The lane is pushing towards the Riven. So what Fiora might try and do... Oh, Fiora didn't even go back. Smart. She hid to make it seem that she went back. She didn't. So now she can hard push it because Riven doesn't have teleport and she can get the lane to reset. Now, what's going on here is a bit peculiar. No, it's not. Wow, that was really... Whoa, that's actually five head. What did that Fiora just do? She ran through the tower to get the, to get the wave further into the tower because the minions, if they kept walking forward, they would have like met the, the wave maybe about here. She walked it through, got the aggro from the minions to make her minions just walk straight into the tower. Whoa, I've never seen that before. I don't think I've ever seen someone do it that obvious. That's really smart. Wow. Huh. Um, so obviously, what I mentioned earlier about the automation, animation, cancelling, etc. I think, obviously, the old tier map is what Riven used to use. I guess Riven now just uses the whip and then eventually Gore Drinker. I guess it kind of does the same aspect or the same thing. Um, so one thing, if you haven't probably, you know, realized, one thing that is definitely meta in League of Legends right now is overpowered healing. Um, it has been like this for quite a while. Riot has a really, really weird obsession with healing at the moment, and I don't get why. I don't think anybody does. I'd actually love if Riot clarified of what their take on it was. Uh, if you're at early flash... Here we go, big 2v2. This actually could be really good for the Riven. One kill, Hecarim so goddamn squishy. Double kill Riven. And that is one thing I will say, is Hecarim specifically is known as one of the strongest junglers in the game right now. But they are so squishy. You know, they go... A lot of the time... I, I don't know if this one's got Phase Rush, but a lot of the time... Oh, this one's got Conqueror. But a lot of the time, they don't have defensive stats. They go hyper-aggressive early game, and they just get blown up. Yes, they can deal a lot of damage, but it's a glass cannon build, and that can backfire. So that is the start for a Riven that she wants. Double kill top lane. She's buying a Warhammer. So definitely, I, I believe, is rushing a Gore Drinker. Um, which I will say is a bit rare for a lot of these AD duelist champions that they all just seem to be going Ravenous Hydra rush. This Riven's not doing that. Uh, the one thing that I guess is nice for Riven specifically, you'll notice that Fiora's got tier 1 boots and Riven doesn't. Part of the reason that she doesn't need boots is she gets her mobility for free. If Fiora were... Oh, another gank returning bad. Uh, I guess Fiora was 100% dead anyway. Another kill killing spree. Nice gank by Udyr. Free kill, to be honest. The, the Fiora overstayed. No vision, I'd imagine. Uh, and then she overcommits. So, yep, that's really nice. Getting a Riven ahead is never a bad thing. Riven is a scaling champion. We've all seen, I'm sure, Riven's 1v5 combo a team fight in late game. And she was nearly dead. And then she does a few things. And then she's full health. You're like, oh. Uh, but going back onto that, as I was mentioning earlier, yeah, meta at the moment is healing. I... I, I would love, and maybe I, with being league partner, you know, one of the benefits of being a league partner, I can usually try to get questions to devs. And maybe I should actually get a question to the devs of what the hell is going on with healing. Um, it's been strong for a while, so much so that healing has been strong and they made ravenous, um, they made grievous wounds worse. I, I don't know why. Oh my God, are they ganking the Fiora again? I think they are. She's got W available. She opens with ult, but Galio ult as well. Maybe she did use it. Rampage Riven. Fiora's coming over. Udyr doesn't die yet. He does go down. Nice flash by... Oh, nice flash by the Syndra. That's kind of weird. Nashiro. I don't know if this is obviously a name from anime or something bigger, but I've got a Twitch subscriber, Nashiro, who's a regular of our community, so that is a weird name to see pop up in a challenger spectate. That's kind of funny. Uh, Syndra, I will say, needs to be careful. You are playing a little bit with fire. Ooh, not if Hecarim's here, though. Lovely stun, and we'll just mosey her way out. Lovely combos, good mobility use, and now Hecarim could be in trouble. Karma's here. Can the, the Karma press the W? Doesn't look like it in time. Oh, River gets the thing, though! That was nice. And has the knowledge of, yeah, I got you, you're dead. 
This Riven's good. So 5-0 and o Riven, slightly ahead in farm. They've lane swapped the Fiora away from top lane. They are literally putting Syndra in top to try and get the Fiora away from the Riven. Again, it's a skill matchup, and this Fiora is just getting beat. So this is kind of cool to watch. Gordrin can complete, and now Boots of Lucidity. Again, Boots of Lucidity, yes, they give movement speed, tier 2 movement speed, but it's also, you're giving cooldown reduction. Oh, Lice gets the cannon. You're giving a cooldown reduction, so her mobility is more available. And like I was saying earlier, you know, you could argue Fiora's got that mobility to get back to lane like a Riven. Not exactly, because if Fiora did her Q all the way back to lane, she'll be like half mana. Riven has no resource, so she just can get back to lane so much quicker with being a resourceless champion as well. Udit and Karma are chilling around the jungle. Uh, Rift Herald used top lane. I don't know if that was needed in top lane, but I guess it finishes off the tower and uh, they will probably go on their way back to bot. It is worth saying, you know, we said about Ravenous Hydra earlier. If you notice the uh, Zaya on the enemy team, yeah, she's rushed Ravenous Hydra. Even AD carries are building Ravenous Hydra first item. It is ludicrously bit, like strong. I was going to say, I'm not sure if Riven should have escorted that Rift Herald, because Fiora was waiting in that bush and she just killed it before the charge. Nice dodge fake, so she got the W out of the Fiora. Big fight, by the way, happening down in bot lane. Udyr, though, very strong himself. Double kill and Zaya will flash away. Syndra is probably dead. Like, look how tanky this Udyr is, by the way. It is kind of nuts how tanky Udyr is. And he's another champion, I will say, that has seemed to been good in preseason because Udyr has the two aspects of strength. I'm sure most of you know that, you know, the standard build that we're seeing here, Udyr with Demonic and building tank really tanky does quite a lot of damage but more hard to kill while he's ticking you away with demonic burn that's annoying but another new build of udir has actually emerged recently and it's like full damage udir much similar to obviously the hecarim you're kind of seeing and it's full glass cannon and the weird thing is he practically can one-shot anything in league of legends i don't know how it officially works it is using like Prowler's Claw, Collectors, and one other item. And, you know, if, even if you're a tank with like two, 300 armor, he is shredding them in a couple of auto attacks. So I'm not quite sure if some something is not quite right and there's a bug or something going on. I, I don't know, but I've seen the damage that Udyr is dealing with that build and it doesn't quite make sense. And you're like, huh, that shouldn't happen. Like a Malphite with 300 armor getting three shot like Tiger empowered by a new deer boom you know malphite's dead with 300 armor you're like huh so it's a bit weird so i'm, I'm sure something's not quite right going on with that uh, anyway riven as you'll notice now is now building her ravenous hydra so considering she's gonna have gordrink and ravenous hydra the, the funny thing that you've got to kind of say she's waiting off here to see if the enemy team were in, to engage and yes that is silas to support by the way and i don't know why um she will be incredibly tanky with how much healing she does because that's something that people don't really realize that healing gives is a version or a form oh hello there of tankiness you know you can't argue he flashes away you can't argue that a riven going down low because yeah she doesn't have defensive stats but then doing a couple spells and bam she's back up to full health is a form of tankiness and she's gonna have gore drinker and ravenous hydra she ain't gonna die all right, so AD carry now mid lane. Udi is playing around in top lane. He's a little bit in trouble. I think he tried to... He did. He tried to tier two dive. The Fiora, the Hecarim is trying to get him. Flash is coming down. Riven's in the area. Galio ulti. Riven's going to try and do a bit of cleanup. And I think that'll probably be it. Oh, Silas jumped on the Riven. I'm not sure about that one. Tier two towers are really scary at this time in the game. She's waiting. Oh, she does the flash combo. Yeah. No, again, Syndra had flash. There is no reaction that you can do. It is an instant kill when you do it correctly. Enemy team playing with fire and they get burnt. So ace by the enemy team, Riven 802. This is impressive. This is a very, very powerful performance by a Riven. And I will say, just to make it very clear, it's the regional differences. I, even when I was at my peak, you know, in season 2022, 140 LP in Master, wasn't seeing Rivens. I don't see them. You know, it's very rare. But the weird thing is with Riven, 
And I guess some champions are just like that. If you see a Riven in your game, it's a one trick. Like that is just the nature of Riven. I don't know why she's not a just champion that's in the top lane pool because like whenever you see Fiora, a lot of them aren't one tricks. It's just a decent top laner. Riven is nearly the same as Fiora. I would say Fiora is easier. Like Fiora is not hard at all, but Riven is she's difficult. But when you've played her a few times, I reckon like good players, they'll be relatively fine. So it is a bit weird to, for me that you just don't really see them. Not sure what this Silas is doing, by the way. He's, again, is he trolling? He's playing Silas support, so there's always that question anyway. But, yeah, it's a bit weird. Uh, Zaya goes down. Karma's got a W. Rooted does the Hecarim go. Ude now going to chase down. Unfortunate that actually Riven based, by the way, because I think Riven probably could have cleaned up a bunch. But yeah, you know, just see how strong that Udyr was. He finally goes down, but it took them ages to kill him. And now he's built his Jack Show. that, yeah, good luck killing him now. And also, as I said, good luck killing Riven. She's now got amazing and powerful healing. So she'll probably look for something maybe soon. And with the confidence of how much healing she has, you'll just very often see Riven in the middle of all five of them happily like she'll that's where she wants to be because that's where gore drinker will affect the most people that's where ravenous hydra will affect the most people and that's going to give her more healing therefore more likelihood of killing everybody so it's uh, a bit of a weird thing the you know these kind of like heal tanks well there we go and look look at this she doesn't care she literally doesn't care she's probably and she's not even dead i was like she might go down potentially and look, look at the healing. She's just auto-attacking minions. And she's like, yeah, I'll just heal. Look, she's back up to half health. Fiora's going to try her best. Oh, she does get stunned. She's nearly dead. She's not dead yet. The Fiora healing, though, is a problem. Ugh, she's not dead. The mobility with the cooldown reduction. <laughs> I say watching a good ribbon is actually quite fun. But, like, it is sometimes surprising what some champions can do and this is one thing i will say and i don't know if anybody shares the sentiment as like um, like i main many different things i played many different champions but i would deem myself especially in the last season a mage player right i think most of us could agree to that i can't do that as as a mage player what that riven just did even if i was equally as fed as that player even if i'm equally as fed as that riven i as a mage player practically with any mage cannot do what that Riven just did. It doesn't exist. You know, that's the thing. And it's not just a Riven thing. I'd say, like, Assassins, maybe some of them could have done that. But, like, AD fighter champions like Riven, they just seem to be able to do a lot more in a lot of metas. Uh, not every meta, but for the past couple of years, AD fighters have been pretty up there all the time. You know, hell, we're in what a lot of people are calling, like, is it tank meta? Is it not tank meta? It's not really tank tank meta because it's not the tank champions that are benefiting from the items being strong. It's the fighter champions that are benefiting the most. Ud is not really a tank tank. He's like a tank fighter. He's benefiting. Riven and, you know, they're not tanks. They're fighters. All the top laners, Camille, fighter. They're, they're fighter champions. And they, they were strong last season too. Darius right now is incredibly strong. Fighter champion. It's the fighter champions that at the moment are meta. And the funny thing is now, it's likely the Riven... And look how much healing, by the way, the, even the Fiora's got. And the enemy team are really desperately trying to go for this Riven. I'm not surprised. Like, they need to try and kill her. It's crazy to me that it even took that long. But Fiora does get a good shutdown. They even get a kill, a kill on the Kaiser, And that's going to help the enemy team a lot. But it requires three of them to go all in, do everything they can. That was Summoners and Ult by Silas. That was... Alt and Flash by Fiora. That was Ghost and Alt by Hecarim. Just to kill the Riven. You know, when you kind of say that out loud, that is in essence what a tank should be doing. A tank is attracting that much attention and that much time to get a kill. But that's a Fiora. Uh, sorry, that's a, that's a Riven. Not a tank. It's where there is that kind of blended borderline of the amount of healing that I can do is making me basically a tank. 
So she now, by the way, has the new Spear of Shojin, which is like just a Riven item completely, because again, it's all about ability haste, and Riven wants her abilities up as much as she can, because that's where she can maximize her combo and DPS with weaving in her passive. So it's just, I would say Riven might be a really big winner of the patch and the new items and everything. But as I said, because you don't really see, she's not a mainstream top laner, you only see them if they one trick it pretty much nine times out of 10. You're not going to see them all the time. You know, even when Riven is really strong and has been in the past, you still don't really see them. It's it's weird. All right, so Baron was being potentially done, but what the red team have decided instead, look at the mobility that a Riven has, for God's sake. That was no flash. She just covered that that whole distance with just her spells. Um, but yeah, very, very impressive. 12-1-3. It's just crazy. And it's just also worth knowing, remember, Riven herself gets a bigger shield on her E. It scales off how much attack damage she has. So the more AD she has, the tankier she's getting with a shield. Look, by the way, look how much damage that Fiora just did. Like, Fiora's behind. She's got two items, though. It's not terrible. But even just one Q by Fiora is doing a lot, a lot of damage to a Riven. And that, that's just Fiora in a nutshell. Fiora, I think her vital mark does like 20 something percent, 25 percent maybe. And that's where she can kill tanks in one ultimate if she gets all four vitals because that will be 100 percent of their health. Um, So that's why Fiora is so good against tanks no matter what. And unfortunately, Riven, uh, sorry, Fiora has overstayed a bit. Don't, has saved her because Syndra's like, hello there. Oh, this ribbon is just feeling... Look at the damage! Oh my god! Her cooldowns are permanently up. She's gonna die now. Right? 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 <laughs> oh, she's dead now. She's dead. Oh, she's dead. She nearly 1v5 Penta killed. Okay. So when we're... Black Cleaver has now been purchased. When we say, like, is Riven a god of solo queue, even though she's not a mainstream pick, and even though EU West, I don't think, has ever fallen in love with Riven compared to, like, NA, the answer must be yes. Like... Wow, nice. Whoa, whoa! Hello! Jesus, that was really well played. Nice. Dude, I like watching Challenger play. If you enjoyed this, please do throw a like on the video. It does help out. Um, one thing I'll try to do for you guys, because I know some people will be like, wait, Huzz, what runes did you have? You didn't go over them. I need to wait till she's back alive. And then I can pause it. And then I can press C. She has Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, uh, last stand and then sorcery transcendence nimbus cloak and then attack damage attack damage armor so there we go is riven a solo queue god or solo whatever you want to call it i think the answer is yes but the caveat is she's somewhat of more of a specialist champion so if you're good with riven she can be god tier but if you really logically think about it all the items that have a lot of strength at the moment and the fact that healing is so strong and grievous wounds the anti-healing is really weak it just suits things like Riven. It suits things like Fiora. And that's why Fiora is known as the best top laner right now. But in the skill matchup of Riven can beat a Fiora, a Fiora can beat a Riven. But yeah, absolutely mad. Considering how strong Hydra is, Gore Drinker is still strong, and Spear is back, potentially consider Riven. Try her out in preseason. But anyway, that is going to be it. If you guys did enjoy, do throw a like on it, throw a comment, throw a subscribe. Hope you're all doing well, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Cool down.